Hello, hello to all. I'm here today in the Tier 9 American Premium Reward Ship, the USS Black, formerly available for ranking out five, five times if you acquired her early on in World of Warships life, and later available for steel from the Armory. Now, as of this point, we're on patch 0.9.3, so she has been or removed from the armory, so is no longer available. But she will be returning later this year for uh, coal rather than steel as a resource. Now loading up into this match, we are in a tier 8 to 10 match, so we are middle tier on the map Mountain Range. The mode is standard battle, unfortunately, and there is a carrier, an enemy Lexington. And then as well, we have a Harugmo, Fletcher, Bantam, Cossack for the DD lineup and a Dimitri Donskoy in Baltimore as the two radar cruisers. Now this is actually going to be a replay class, so we're going to be able to take this a bit more slowly and analytically. Well, hopefully, that's the idea anyway, since I'm not casting this live, so I've had some time to reflect upon the game, and also kind of, hopefully I will be able to kind of talk my way through my decision making throughout this match. I'm going to stay in my personal perspective, I'm just kind of cruising forward, having spawned on the weak flank, as you can see, with a Bismarck in Iowa and Lexington. But overall, uh, just in case, a brief overview, uh, we do get the carrier to spot the Fletcher, by the way, so we do get some information about what's ahead of us, so it looks like we have mirrored weak flanks. Uh, but just an FYI, the USS Black is a Fletcher hull, same as the Tier 9 Tech Tree Destroyer that we see in front of us. Five single 127mm guns, which fire quite rapidly. In my case, I believe I have BFT, so mine fired about 3.3 second reload. Uh, however, her gimmick is that while she has a standard Fletcher hull and standard Fletcher concealment, she has these fast reloading slow torpedoes, firstly. So they have 13.5 kilometers of range. If I just hover them, oh, I'm not inclined, so I can't hover them, but they're Actually, no, it's 13.7 kilometers of range, if I'm not mistaken, a weird range, and a hit for something like 20,000 damage. So very high damage, uh, higher than the standard 18,000 of the regular Fletcher Torps. However, in exchange, they are very slow, traveling at just 40.3 knots of speed. Uh, they are very stealthy and very slow at the same time. Okay, looks like I didn't snap quite into view. Anyway, I've seen the Fletcher, so I just pop some torpedoes screening in that direction, and he gets respotted by the Lexington. So I'm going to move up toward him and approach to make use of my second gimmick, which of course is the USS Black's uh, radar consumable. I don't know why my periscope doesn't show up when I zoom in the replay, but here you can see me. I've identified that I'm not quite outside of the range of the Donskoy, but I reckon because he's not here in the side, I'm probably not too at risk of getting radared by him, so I'm going to smoke up and pop my radar. So the Fletcher, or the Black rather, has a standard destroyer radar, it has 7.5 kilometer action radius, and it has a 20 second base action time. You can upgrade this to 24 seconds with the module, which I do have. So, seeing the Fletcher smoke up after getting harassed by the carrier on my team, I'm just going to smoke up myself and put some shots into him and push him away able to inflict 7k and quite safely disengage myself from the enemy carrier. Fletcher is of course torping my smoke, but thanks to the black having a Fletcher hull, I am very nimble and thus able to easily dodge. Now my first pre-torps into the gap did end up missing, didn't hit anything, but now at this point, from the safety of my smoke, I'm able to torp these battleships which are quite nearby. My torpedoes are very slow, so any minor course adjustments will probably result in them dodging. I'm watching the aircraft, by the way, to see if I can safely leave the smoke, because I don't want to get rushed, potentially. So I dump some torps in the general direction of that squad of Jean Bar, North Carolina, and Kremlin, and I'm going to disengage. My RPF at this point is telling me where the Fletcher is, but I'm not interested in re-engaging him. You can see that above me to the north, the battleships that were initially supporting me have quite soundly left, so I'm kind of on my own at this point. Thankfully for me, the Lexington has moved on to harassing the Shimakaze in my base, so I'm going to have some breathing room. But do note that now, without my smoke, and without having a strong enough AA to really kill even tier 8 planes, the USS Black's AA is a bit weaker than the Fletcher's, and she's not able to mount defensive fire without giving out the radar. So I'm in quite a vulnerable position, so I have to be careful. My Torps are pre-launched into the gap for North Carolina do look pretty good. 
Jean Bart's clearly going to escape, but given the huge spread of slow moving torpedoes, it looks like the North Carolina is on course to take several of my torpedoes, which are, well, anti battleship torpedoes. In the distance, I see rocket planes coming as my torpedoes connect, and we're able to score a quick, devastating strike on the North Carolina with a full spread. Now, my air spot range, as you can see on the minimap, is 2.6, so I'm gonna have to play an evasive game. Now, as a Lex Engine player, he knows he's spotted, so he knows I'm inside his radius somewhere, and he knows that I've just torped his North Carolina and I was fighting the Fletcher. So he's coming toward me, so what I'm doing now is I'm watching on the minimap to try and keep my 2.6 outside away from the plane, and I'm gonna try and duck behind this mountain. Now, the when I duck behind this mountain, I'm going to be blind to the aircraft because it's going to block my vision of the aircraft, but it's also going to blind him. He's going to lose that detected ribbon. And hopefully, he'll think that, because of his large radius, he'll think that perhaps I was hovering over here and then he left the range. He got too far away in this direction, so I might be somewhere up north. So the idea is to break detection here. As we do now, I'm going to wait for a little bit. Let him screen off. Oh, and he's like, oh, oh, I'm not spotted anymore. I guess I'm too far south. He's going to circle back north, and this should give us some time to kind of get away. Our goal now is to get back to the safety of Allied AA. My, I have my smoke back up in case of emergency, but I would really prefer to just be able to evade my way over. The Fletcher has uh, went off on some kind of journey. He's no longer my closest RPF target. The RPF is this cluster of ships here still. You can see the planes did actually loop around behind, but now we're on the other side of the island. So, thankfully he's missed us again. He is very close though at 4.5, so he is still searching for us rather determinedly. At this point though, he's searching the wrong side. He's kind of misdiagnosed the situation. The Donskoy pops up just, we're almost on the edge of his radar range. I'm just going to pop torps in case, he, in case he keeps reversing in this direction. I have nothing to spend them on anyway, and... The Black has a very short torpedo reload. You can see just 116 seconds with this current spec that I run. And that's without having torpedo armament expertise. So popping torps and continuing to glide toward my team. My smoke is available on demand. And you can see the planes are closing on me, but still screening the wrong area. You can see me getting a bit cheeky in chat, because at this point the carrier has already spent two minutes searching fruitlessly for me in that cluster of rocks while he's not been affecting the game at all. Now my team, in terms of a macro perspective, is very bunched up here. Uh, basically everyone abandoned this flank after the initial skirmish, which is not unusual but kind of chaotic, especially in the standard battle. The enemy carrier of course does uh, not particularly care about my assessment of his wasting his time, but do note that for me here, this RPF indicator is a bit concerning. I know there's a Benham and Fletcher nearby, so I do have to be, stay on my toes. I'm waiting for my torpedo reload to come up. There's a whole bunch of ships here, as you can see, that are well within my torpedo range. So I'm just going to dump my torpedoes into the window over here. Now, whether these hit anything or not, I'm not sure, but it's a good space to put them, so it's just a nice spot to dump. There's plenty of ships that are liable to be there. The Donskoy, again, still hovering. I'm actually inside his radar range, but kind of right on the edge, so if I need to disengage, I can quite easily. You can see at this point, the carrier planes are getting quite close to me. He's identified that I'm not actually in this cluster of islands at this point. Uh, he has been wasting his time for about three minutes now at this point, though. And we stumble upon a Benham, who I do briefly outspot, but more importantly, I outgun. Now I know the carrier's over there, and there's also a Fletcher that was over there in the window. So I'm gonna start immediately popping that smoke. He smokes as well in response, but I am a USS Black and I have my radar. So I pop my radar in order to keep him from going dark. Now you can see the single guns of the Fletchers, or of the, of the Black rather, the single 127s have a little bit of accuracy issues, plus the arcs actually do get quite lengthy at long distances. By reversing, I'm quite able to get out of the way of the Benham Torps. Initial salvos, I did take some fire from the Fletcher on the side. Uh, my dodging does take some of my attention away from aiming, and I'm unable to finalize the kill, unfortunately. However, I do see that my allied carrier is making a strike, which means I'm going to get some spotting information because the Benham is on fire. Again, I was starting to creep forward, but I stop again as I spot the torpedoes thanks to that nimble Fletcher hull and powerful engine to weight ratio. Smoke protects me from the carrier, and my shells do finally eventually 
finish off the Venom. Dumping Torps towards the Kremlin, he's gonna turn away more than likely, but I have nothing to Torp again anyway, and because my Torpedo Reload is so short, I'm just using my Area Denial Torps. And at this point, we're almost back to the pack, although the majority of the pack of my teammates that was here are actually kind of dead right now, so I am still kind of on my own, but thanks to the powerful American smoke that the Black has access to, I'm able to stay quite safe. Farming here for a little bit, but shooting a Kremlin is exactly my ideal choice of scenario. I'm gonna need my teammates here to kind of step it up and kill the concave, but you can see at this point we have managed to accumulate a ship lead, having dispatched the Benham in North Carolina quite soundly on our own. Do note I'm still on the edge of the Dawn Squad radar, but even if he does radar me as I get spotted by the Fletcher by firing openly while crossing this gap, Fletcher firing on me, but he's at 10 kilometers and very far away, so he's very out of position. Nevertheless, I'd rather fire at a Fletcher and land some chip damage than shoot at the Kremlin and do nothing. Enemy Lexington diving in with HEDBs. I sector my AA. You can see the Black's AA is not particularly impressive. It's actually worse than the Fletcher's, and I don't have defensive fire, but I'm going to duck into this Venom smoke left behind earlier and just de aggro him right as he arrives overhead. Now, the Dawn Squad could have radared if he wanted to do some team play, but he's uh, a little busy doing other things from the looks of it. Gonna continue to just disengage, resector, try to trim as many planes as possible. He's coming in above me now, but just a quick duck to the side should help me avoid the majority of the bombs. And indeed, I only take one thanks to a little bit of just dodging. I had a bit of a cheeky exchange in the chat telling the carrier that he's wasting his time, and he probably could have been winning the game if he'd just been, say, attacking this lonely Yamato over there. Getting obsessed over destroyers is a surefire way to lose games in the mid to late game, especially in a situation like this, where you're up actual physical surface ships, but down on destroyers. So yes, you can kind of affect the game by removing the destroyer advantage, but an easier way is to actually just remove the surface ships that can actually threaten you, and then you can pick off the destroyers at your leisure uh, once you have a surface ship advantage. In this case, the Alaska's kind of thorny and back there, but my Yamato is perfectly vulnerable. Instead, of course, this Lexington is coming after us. Now, I attempt to smoke up myself and a Fletcher, and the Cossack does show himself as the rocket planes come in and clean up my Fletcher. He does not recognize the threat in time and slow down, even though I smoke quite early for him. Nevertheless, I am still at USS Black, and this Cossack, while well, he is a formidable duelist, and has better detection than me, does not have the advantage of having a way to break the smoke screens stealth without getting very, very close. And the Fletcher, with five single 127s with three second reload, is no slouch when it comes to gunpower, even against a gunboat like the Cossack. So with the help of my radar, I'm quite able to mow him down, set a fire, my radar ends, but he has firing bloom, slash fire bloom, and the Asashio is nearby to spot for me. In addition, of course, my Lexington was doing a flyby, so I'm able to quite confidently take it out. Now, there's still that Don Squad in the corner, so I'm going to dump my Torps in his general direction in case he pushes outward. Don't know, don't know why he's playing there. He's not a Moskva. The Don Squad shouldn't be played like a Moskva, so he's kind of making a error there. In terms of the rest of my team, well, what's left of them are holding the corner. Still, that Yamato that I said needed to be attacked earlier is still kind of right there, and quite healthy because the Lexington has been harassing the destroyers instead of him, and so the Kremlin can't really do anything to him by himself, and the Donskoy is not exactly the highest HED PM threat. Now I'm moving away from the objective towards my RPF, of course, because I remember that Fletcher's still up there. Now if you remember the last time we saw him, he was at 4k, I'm at 11k, I'm out of radar charges, but I reckon uh, and with 4,000 hit points, a Fletcher should be able to dispatch another Fletcher in short order before he can smoke even if he has it. All I have to do is be careful of torpedoes, but as you saw quite early, quite a bit earlier, the Fletcher has quite nimble hull. We spot each other at 5H, and as I mentioned, he's quite low, so it's very easy for me to just open up and dispatch him, especially with my gunboat-focused black captain. We dispatch him, and we're able to bring the points back up. We were kind of behind right before. Uh, so basically, at this point, because we're fairly even on points, based on what's left, because we have lost more large capital ships, and I believe some enemy ships spent a very brief amount of time in our cap, so we're behind on points. 
So at this point, we've cleaned up the Fletcher. That's the last kill we can clean up on our own from this position. And these guys are kind of on their own. I can't really affect the game. Right now, all I can see is the Donskoy Kremlin, and I know the Lexington is pushing up quite slowly. So at this point, I'm relying on my Yamato to beat the Kremlin. The Yamato has 32mm overmatch. I don't see the HPs. Thanks to the aerial spotting, however, the Kremlin's able to take out my Asashio. And I'm not sure whether those Asashio Torps will land. It looks like at this point that they've missed quite cleanly. So it's up to my Yamato and my carrier. However, the Kremlin has formidable AA, and the, my Lexington is probably not the most proficient Lexington ever, considering the way he's throwing his planes at the Kremlin repeatedly without any real results. I briefly spot the Lexington again, and I'm drifting into Dawn Square radar range, but at this point, I don't really care. I'm looking for a way to affect the game. The Kremlin is both outside of my torpedo range and way far away. I can see with my torpedo indicator, as my Yamato is exchanging fire with the Donskoy, he's shooting at him. That Donskoy is reversing, so I'm going to just start with an anticipatory set of torpedoes in case he continues reversing out, and in case he kind of reverses a little bit and then stops. But I'm going to close with the Donskoy, and at this point I have to kill him one versus one. You can see with the death of the Asasho, we fell behind on points once more, so I need to find a way to catch up. So the two ways are obviously through kills and getting a kill advantage, or through touching the cap. So I'm going to glide toward the cap and the Dawn Skoy. You see me switch to AP here because he's giving me quite a bit of side, as you can see. And considering my options, I'm going to wait for the fire one last time, and then I'm going to open up on him. You can see his turrets are completely traversed towards the Yamato. My Yamato is, at, of course, at this point, either going to kill the Kremlin or get rammed. I can't really worry about that at this point. He's outside my realm of influence. The enemy carrier has torpedo bombers out, so I'm quite safe to use AP. And you can see, even though there's nothing special about Fletcher AP, or Black AP in this case, it versus broadside light cruisers like the Donskoy at this range is more than enough to inflict some severe damage. He was at 9k, so it won't take me that long to work him down. The Donskoy brings this relatively sluggish turret traverse to bring his turrets around, but his turrets were turned completely the wrong way, so he only fires with his frontal turrets. He does 2k into me, and the Yamato does help me out and finish him off, leaving the Lexington. You can see my fast loading torpedoes are already loaded again. So I'm going to dump a set into him at this point and just start hammering him with HE. Now I could again be using the AP, but you can see at this distance of 11 kilometers, my shell arcs have quite a bit of arc. Now the Lexington is not thinly, or is not thickly armored at all, but since my HE is penning, it's better, or more or less penning, about half of them are, it's better to try and get a fire and hit the deck. Now he's obviously defending himself, so you can see me sectoring versus the rocket planes, but there's not too much I can do. I haven't really actually been attacked by his rockets too much, so I don't know if he's a Vars or Tiny Tims. Do note he's a Vars, so I was giving him broadside, so that's the incorrect thing to do. I should have dove in, but I wasn't aware that they were... Uh, he was using Havars at the time. So, I'm looking... Well, I'm holding down right-click to keep firing at the same vector while looking at the rockets. I tried to dodge, but I kind of dodged into them again. Thankfully, I do survive the rocket squadron. I repaired the first fire because I just don't have HP to work with. If he perma-fired me there, that was just something I was going to have to accept. Managed to score a confed. He's coming with HEDBs, and at this point, thanks to my low HP, I'd much rather dodge HEDBs than that. My torps are about to come up. You can see me sectoring. Now versus HEDBs, obviously I want to give as much broadside as possible. And you can see me, even though he was reversing before, I'm expecting him to accelerate forward, so I'm just going to pre-torp at this point. Shrimming some amount of planes, but my AA is pretty lit, and I'm pretty lit, so very liable to die. And sadly, the HEDB squadron, in spite of my best efforts, does manage to finish me off. Now in the distance, while I was engaging the Donskoy and the Lexington, the Kremlin and Yamato did unfortunately take a ram, so now that it's down to one versus one, because we briefly had an enemy destroyer touch our cap for just a couple of seconds, you can see we are two ticks behind, so we're six points behind. So I need this Lexington to either kill this enemy Lexington, which is unlikely considering the size of his reserves previously, or I need my torpedoes to connect with the Lexington. Now I just launched him kind of back at where he would go if he would just dive into the rock and move forward and forward like that. So that was what I was anticipating, if he was moving, continuing forward. My Lexington does move through an entire fighter squadron, so unfortunately, uh, my carrier might not be the brightest. However, you can see he did start a turn outward, and I put a pretty wide spread of nearly invisible black torpedoes. 
So you can see he turned to dodge the Lexington's single torpedo. However, my very slow moving 40 knot torpedoes are in a rather wide spread. And each one of them, remember, hits for 20,000 damage. So, thankfully, because I put a fairly wide spread, I am able to nail the last two torpedo hits for a quick crock. And that will win us the game that we were about to lose on time. So, hopefully this is capturing the correct screen. So you can see here, it ends up being a pretty fantastic game. 160,000 damage, 221 shell hits, 7 target hits, 11 plane kills, 6 incapacitations, 5 kills, 4 fires, 4 floods, and 5 spotting ribbons, and that's good for a confed, a devastating strike on the North Carolina, a kraken, and a flesh wound on the, for that Lexington who was harassing us for most of the mid and late game. Team score-wise, top of the scoreboard at 22,055. So a pretty good game. Good job as well to my Yamato who held things off in the corner. Now, of course, he probably should have been obliterated by my, the enemy Lexington, but the enemy Lexington decided to engage me in a little game of cat and mouse. And even though I will always lose in the long run, as you saw there by him quite soundly <laughs> dispatching me toward the end of all of that, uh, I did manage to spend enough of his time to catch us back into the game by catching out the Fletcher and Donskoy and Benham in that mid-game segment. Detailed report-wise, you can see most of the damage does come from Raw Torpedo Alpha. However, I did do quite a bit of damage with my main battery, if you'll see here. 48,000 in HE DPM onto the Lexington, or actually not even that much, it's probably like 20k. 11,000 into the Fletcher that I caught off guard, 5k into the Benham, 9k into the Cossack, and 12k with AP into the side of that Dmitry Donskoy who decided to unwisely reverse into my sights. However, the majority of my damage did, more than half of it, did in fact come from just 7 torpedoes. I launched 110 over the course of the game thanks to my short torpedo reload, but I only landed 7 of them. But just the 7 was enough for 86,000 thanks to the Black's enormous torpedo alpha and just a tiny amount of dot damage. And you can see I did a ton of aircraft damage but I didn't actually shoot any down kind of all chip damage that got healed away and didn't really end up impacting anything. And in case you care, credit-wise, the USS Black is of course a full premium, and I'm running the uh, ranked token camel, Allsman Crocodile, which gives plus 150, 150, 152 experience, commander experience, and free experience, which results in some pretty large gains with just some basic plus 50% flags and the first win of the day plus 50%. So a nice chunk of experience as well. Screen will be black for a brief moment as I load back up onto the client. I do have to close the client, unfortunately, to, uh, what's it called? To play the replay. So you're gonna see the screen briefly go to black. I'm gonna log in first. So we're gonna get some black screen while I hide my credentials. And so now, while we're logging in, let me turn this back on so I don't c continue talking on a black screen. Just before we go, we had that great game, but I had to use screenshots because, of course, the client wiped my match history when I closed it to play the replay. A fun game just now, however, so... Definitely showing off some of the abilities of the USS Black in when you have the opportunity. And showing off how a good haul, even with crappy AA and a mindful captain, can survive a persistent carrier captain that's not using their critical thinking skills. Now, if that were a midway, things might have been a bit different. I probably would have taken a lot more damage from the rockets, but it was a Lexington, so in this case we were able to get away with operating alone on the flank. So here's this, here's the USS Black with her ultimate crocodile perma camo. I don't care about clan battles, thank you very much, get out of my way. So here she is, a Fletcher hull, with her five Fletcher mounts and twin Fletcher quints in the center. Now do note that compared to the actual Fletcher, she is a bit weaker AA. Eh? For example, she has 20mm Orlikans here, but if you go to the actual Fletcher herself, those 20mm Orlikans are replaced by twin 40mm Bofors mounts, and this accounts for the 
Black's overall weaker AA. You can see she has some of the Bofors mounts still, especially the rearward ones, but those two frontal nests have been replaced by 20 millimeters. The USS Black, of course, representing a earlier war variant of the Fletcher with less AA. Soft stat wise, she's pretty much identical to the Fletcher. 5.8 detectability, 2.6 air spot, and then an excellent 560 millimeter turning circle and three second rudder shift time. Her speed is slightly lower at 36.8 knots. My Fletcher does not have flags right now, I believe. So you'll see 36.5, but do note that my black is mounting a speed flag and my Fletcher is not. Torpedo wise, as I mentioned, the two by fives with the 13.7 kilometers of range. They do 45 knots, I believe that's with the torpedo module. So these give 5%, so they're giving two knots of speed. So they do 43-ish knots by default and have 13.7 kilometers of range. And then of course with my build, you have the 12.8 kilometer Fletcher gun range and three second reload. So consumable priority wise, you want your damage control then your smoke, and then your radar in that order. But really, if you can afford a USS Black, she makes a metric ton of money. So you should be taking all three premium consumables, and those are going away next patch anyway, so I guess it should be fine. Upgrade-wise, main battery. You have dual-purpose main battery anyway, so you want to keep your torpedo tubes and main guns operational. Slot 2, if you can afford it, you want that radar module to extend the action time of your radar from 20 seconds to 24. Well, apparently it's 22. So you want to extend it from 22 to 26. My apologies there for the inaccuracy. It's not three, quite obvious. Uh, in the past you would have taken AA guns mod, but that's trash now. And instead now you have a module that gives you very much needed torpedo speed to your very slow torpedoes. And also improves your torpedo to traverse. So no reason not to take torpedo tubes modification. Slot 4 propulsion, a pretty standard destroyer module. So that when you're starting and stopping, such as when I was in that smoke, uh, engaging that venom, you're able to start and stop as necessary. In order to torpedo beat slot 5, you put concealment system to widen the radar versus surface detectability gap as much as possible. It's just like a no-brainer for all destroyers. And slot 6, I opt personally for torpedo tubes. Modification 2 to get my torpedo tube reload down and get add some versatility. You saw there that even though I did, uh, did a ton of gun boating and indeed my captain is geared towards gun boating, uh, torpedoes ended up putting out the majority of my damage when I could get them to impact the torpedoes, by the way. Have this enormous alpha of 21,600, which is pretty much equivalent to a Shimakaze Torp. However, uh, they only have 0.9 kilometers of detectability, whereas if you take a ship with a Shimakaze Torp, such as the Yugamo, for example, you will note that her torpedoes have a detectability of 1.7, so nearly double the reaction time at about 8 seconds. So whereas you get 8 seconds reaction time with these shimmy torps, the black gives you only 4 seconds, which even though the torpedoes are extremely slow, usually results in some heavily crippling blows if you've aimed them correctly in area denial fashion. Captain wise, I'm using my Fletcher captain, and this is my Fletcher black captain. So uh, normally for US high tier boats, you will actually spec them for the torp spec. These Somers and Gearing are usually spec'd towards their torpedoes. They are hybrids, but in the end, or semi-hybrids in the haste of the Somers, but in the end you will see most people spec them towards torpedoes. The USS Black, however, is a bit of a destroyer hunter. If you remember, she has that low detection ability and that radar, as well as a fast rate of fire on her uh, close engaging 127mm single turrets. So as a result, I spec her towards gun power. Standard DD build, preventative maintenance into last stand into survivability expert into concealment expert for your first 10 points. Then for 13, take BFT. This improves your AA very marginally. Your base AA stat is unfortunately pretty bad, so it doesn't do that much. It gives you like 20 continuous DPS or something. But more importantly, it gives you 10% reload, bringing you down from 3.3 base gun reload to 3 seconds flat. I take this, of course, to maximize the benefit out of my radar. I only have 26 seconds of radar, and this is random battles where you can't guarantee that your teammates are going to help you shoot someone up. So if you got to do it yourself, might as well make your guns as powerful as possible to maximize your chances of dispatching an opponent inside of that single radar. That Benham, for example, you saw managed to slip away at a tiny sliver of health, but I was able to finish him because he was so low due to some additional spotting a little bit later. But if I had been missing that 
0.3 seconds of reload, he probably would have been 2,000 to 3,000 HP even higher. Uh, and he probably would have just gotten away, and that probably would have resulted in a game loss. After the 13 points, go back for Adrenaline Rush and Radio Location. Radio Location obviously allowing you to do cheeky stuff like pre-torping areas, as well as just giving you some information so as to not get surprised, like as you saw at the end, when that rogue Fletcher was just wandering out towards the top of the base, I would not have known precisely where he was, and I probably wouldn't have ended up wandering in the right direction toward him without the use of radial location, so obviously very critical, and round out the build at 19 points with Adrenaline Rush. Now, Adrenaline Rush versus BFT is an interesting discussion, but getting the 10% up front is better than getting up to 20%, depending on how low you are, even if this does affect guns and torpedoes. So Adrenaline Rush, while an extremely valuable skill, is a tad overrated. I rate it as a very good skill that you don't need to have to succeed, whereas BFT is just a flat bonus which really helps you with your performance over the course of a game no matter how much damage you take. Anyhow, with that said, I hope you enjoyed. That was a pretty spicy USS Black game. It's been a while since I covered USS Black. Sadly, she's not currently available, but she will be coming back later in the year. She has been power crept somewhat. She used to be an extremely overpowered boat. Now she's just marginally overpowered, if somewhat niche. But yeah, a great little boat on a great hull. The Fletcher hull has always been one of the uh, community favorites. And a good showcase of how to kind of play towards your win conditions and survive a carrier threat that's very persistent as a destroyer. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you all later. Cheers!